Hi everyone, I'm America Josh and welcome to Travel Updates with Travel Elias with Elias Mukta from Liberty Travel. G'day Elias, how are you? How's it going, mate? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get that better Practicing. every single week, don't you worry. <laughs> are you well? I'm doing great. Upstate New York here, very cold. I know Josh can uh, attest to that. No, it's. Uh, I was just saying that uh, I took my dog for a walk this morning at 6am and had our first flurry of snow and it was brief and small but... Uh, yeah, it was 20 degrees and it was cold. <laughs> Not my favourite. <laughs> Elias, you've got to, I know we were having a chat about, um, you know, how are things looking in general and, and are things getting less volatile and changing or, uh, uh, you know, is it still a bit all over the place with the travel industry at the moment? So it's, it, it is a little bit all over the place, especially here in the US. So a lot of things did open up for a while and now we're getting back into a little bit of a COVID coming back. So things are starting to get a little hairy again. Uh, I know Melbourne just opened up. Uh, so a lot of people want to go back to Melbourne, but you got to realize that uh, even though it's open, the cap limits are still pretty low. And uh, even if it's open for the 10th, 11th, 12th travel, there's probably no tickets available. So you still have to move into February or March travel to get a decent price to be able to go to Melbourne. But as far as what we were talking about earlier, I am getting people calling in and they're like, all right, I want to go for April or May travel and we'll get all the information sent over. And then they'll wait four, five, six days and say, Hey, I'm ready to book or Hey, I got another question. And in between that time, the price has changed now. It's gone up hundreds of dollars. So I say, if, wow, I know, I know it's a little volatile with figuring out what's going on at home. And that's my job that I've been applying for over there. It's going to work out. All yeah, that stuff. Yeah, yeah. If we see a good price, let's lock it in because the prices will change. So it's not good to price out an April flight now and say, all right, I'll wait till January to book it because by January that price is going to be gone. And the uh, itinerary is going to be full. It's it just prices are going to be ridiculous at that point. No, I think it's, um, I mean, that blows my mind that uh, months out, we're still seeing so much volatility. So I think it's really about, you know, what we talked about last week, which is planning in advance, being flexible. So making sure that you've got, you know, a, a little bit of a, a window to look at so that you don't have to leave on a particular day at a particular hour and don't wait until the last minute. And just as you said, once you've um, you know, express some interest or you've worked out the frame of time that you want to travel in to commit to it and lock it down right now and, and don't wait. Yeah. Yeah. The same thing that'll happen that's happening now for December and January, where the rates are eight, nine, and ten thousand dollars a ticket. If you wait, everybody that can't travel in December and January is gonna have to move their trips into February, March, and April. And like I was saying just a second ago, there I had a client who I just priced out on Friday, and by Monday the price had gone up five hundred dollars a ticket in economy at that. <laughs> Damn, that's <laughs> That's yeah. Okay, so jump on it if you uh, if you know when you want to go, then get in touch with you guys and and lock in a flight. Um, I know uh, also you've been chatting to Travel Josh, who's just headed back to Australia, and uh, does he have any updates for us? Yes. So I've been talking to Josh via text and WhatsApp uh, three, four times a day now uh, because we've been taking care of a lot of his clients, and I wanted to just kind of see what's going on. Uh, uh, over there, boots on the ground, what's going on with the quarantine, what's going on with uh, how were the flights, things like that. So I was telling uh, America Josh just a, a second ago that they actually gave Josh Engstrom a first class ticket home, uh, which was a huge it's part. the half travel. <laughs> <laughs> and Josh was telling me, he's like, I've never traveled this, so this is going to be fantastic. And it was like a $14,000 one-way first class flight home. And plenty to say about it. So I wanted to kind of just share some of that information. Uh, one, uh, if you've ever flown first class or business class for that fact, uh, the food is unbelievable. It's like sitting at a five-star restaurant. But he's saying food has gone downhill a bit since <laughs> COVID must have started. Oh, man. Because um, in first class, he said it was fairly mediocre. So uh, okay. just be aware. If you're a first class flyer and you're expecting the bells and whistles, May have to grab something. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good to know because I think uh, in the back of our minds, you know, even if we're, you know, COVID's happening, it's, it's still a very real thing in the world. But you kind of think, you know, if you're paying the premium for business class and you want to lock in that flight and make sure you don't, you know, don't get bumped or you've got a lesser chance of being bumped and, and all that in your mind, you do expect that there's a, the, all the, the mod cons and the perks that come with it. Yeah, you would expect, hey, I just paid $10,000 for a ticket. This should be 
a heck of a flight, but sometimes you got to be aware. Uh, the other thing that goes with that is uh, the business class lounges. Um, they're not all open and they are not all running the, the full hours that they normally would. So you got to just be aware that if you get to an airport and there's a limit on how many people could be in that lounge at a time, you should check, pre-check and see if uh, the space would be there um, because you don't want to be caught uh, in hanging out at the office with uh, at the airport sorry with uh, with nowhere to go that's um yeah very good point because i assumed i don't know all these things that uh, once you say them out loud it's sort of like of course the lounges aren't open at full capacity but it's uh, something that you would again expect to be a part of your your ticket so i think that also goes for uh, like all the food service in those lounges and all the food service in general is all very limited and you know it's no longer the sort of rolling buffets or anything they're all gone so it's important to consider what exactly your options are before you leave yeah and um, we're trying to share news and not necessarily great news but we want you to be aware so when you are at the airports you don't go oh my god what's going on how come this lounge is closed or uh i've, I've got an eight hour layover this is what i planned on doing so just so you're aware while you're traveling no and it's really uh, like it's one thing that josh and i talked about a lot um you know in the last few months because we didn't want these updates to be negative the point isn't to you know be rain on anyone's parade but we want to make sure that we've set expectations and everyone's informed but i mean you get a lot of people i'm sure that you know they do get they on their planes and they do get back to australia or wherever they're going so it, we do have success stories for, for what people are looking to do 90 percent of the stories are success stories so that's we do want to share that but there are some hiccups and i've been joining a lot of facebook groups and things like that with others uh, australians that have been going home some still in the u.s others that have made it back to australia and just kind of reading over the news on some of these people and what they're sharing and they're all saying make sure you get a balcony in that room <laughs> i think if we could pick balconies that's uh, <laughs> the, we're, everyone will be ticking that box and I, I think it's a really important thing to mention as well is that we we don't know yet uh, when quarantine, when caps will be lifted. We don't we don't have any information. There is no information to have. <laughs> you can hear my uh, hear it. <laughs> that was uh, that was Rue the dog. I was saying I've, I've been scouring through everything, through all our contacts and the the websites and everything, just to see what the newest updates are. And sometimes there are no updates, and you just gotta gotta go with what you have. That's exactly right. It's exact, and I, I think it's just important that people know that because I've gotten a few emails and people ask, you know, can you address and can you chat with Elias about, you know, when travel caps are going to be lifted and when quarantine will be different. But unfortunately, there is no right answer because that has not been set. There is actually no fact that we can, uh, you know, it's not that we haven't dug deep enough and we haven't looked in enough groups and and uh, speculated enough, but there is no answer. So as soon as we know the answer, we will no doubt be here and having a chat about how things are going to be ramping down. But for uh, from you know there's no point me speculating either but you know i can't see it changing myself for some time and um, that would be my guess without to, without any reason to change it's going to be a little while yeah and there's one last tidbit of information i wanted to share because i get this question a lot um people wonder what's the availability on this particular flight do i have or i want to book economy are there enough seats for me to try to get into this or wait a day or two to so one we don't know how many seats are booked on that flight and how many seats are available the one thing we do know that people that are flying business versus economy have a much better shot of actually making it back home and i hate to say this because it uh, i'm embarrassed sometimes to send people the, the pricing on some of these yeah, for sure. ridiculous but there on most of these flights there are more people sitting in business class than there are in economy economy might have 300 seats in it but they may only have 50 seats that are allowed filled. to be filled yeah. so uh even josh on the flight he said there's more business class people on that flight than there were economy because they bumped all the economy people off to make room for basically the business class travelers unfortunately it's the way the world i guess yeah okay it sucks but uh yeah if you're desperately in need of getting back that's um unfortunately the, the cost that we all have to bear at the moment yeah 
Thank you, Elias, mate. Uh, we're going to work on your g'days at the beginning every single week. Don't you worry. <laughs> but we really appreciate you taking the time. And if people do want to reach out and ask you a question or get in touch about booking some flights, what's the best way to get in touch with you? The best way would be to email us at americajosh at libertytravel.com. Makes it very simple, and you know you'll get an answer that day because there'll be multiple people <laughs> keeping track of it. Yeah. No, awesome. I'm uh, privileged to have a, my very own libertytravel.com email address. So America Josh, um, so it's America Josh at libertytravel.com, um, and that'll go to Elias and the Liberty Travel team who will get back to you with information. Thank you, mate, and uh, we'll speak to you next week. Thank you so much.